Good morning, everyone. Uh, we will call this session to order. I am delighted uh, to uh, be joined uh, by any number of members whose names I will call. But let me acknowledge the IC IWCC co-chairs. Um, and this is our Iranian Women's Congressional Caucus. Uh, Chair Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and co-chair Representative Nancy Mace and the Iran Human Rights and Democracy Caucus, um, co-chairs Representative Steve Cohen and Representative Tom McClintock, who you are looking at right now. Uh, and we will begin uh, with uh, my opening remarks um, and uh, the uh, opening remarks of Congresswoman Mace, uh, who is uh, here uh, shortly. Uh, and let us emphasize this is a very important moment here in the United States Capitol on the Hill on this day, May 18th, uh, 2023. Thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you for your expression of uh, influence, importance, a heart commitment, and the recognition uh, that those whose lives have been lost will never be forgotten. To all of you who have expressed and experienced pain of lost loved ones, in the fight for freedom, we offer to you our combined commitment to a free Iran. And so we are very grateful of your presence here today. Uh, and I will begin uh, by um, welcoming all of you uh, and indicating that we must collectively in the Iranian diaspora, all Iranians um, who uh, are here uh, expressing uh, their desire for freedom, and those around the world. As founder and co-chair of the Iranian Women Congressional Caucus, I'm honored to be here today to hold the first joint meeting of the newly formed Iranian Congressional Caucus, and pleased to be here with the Iran Human Rights and Democracy Caucus on the situation of women and human rights in Iran and what Congress can do to help the Iranian people achieve their freedom. First, I want to say that we want to unify Iranians across America and those across the world who are collectively have a goal. And that goal is to come uh, and to stand in the sunlight of Iran, free, to be able to honor their fallen and to also meet their loved ones who have been separated uh, by this, uh, how should I put it, but no less than evil uh, regime. I'm pleased um, uh, to uh, present our special guest in just a few minutes. But last month, uh, I introduced HRES 310, a bipartisan resolution condemning the inaction by the Islamic Republic of Iran in addressing the poisoning of Iranian schoolgirls, the daughters of the Iranian Revolution, which now has 36 co-sponsors. This resolution recognized the bravery and resilience of women who have faced tremendous challenges in their fight for equality and human rights. We have all witnessed the courage of women and youth leading the 2022 protests in Iran, calling for social freedom and political change. All they asked for was a moment of freedom, dignity, and respect. And they got death poisoning. We've all witnessed the courage of women and youth in leading the 2022 protests in Iran, calling for social freedom and political change. As stated in the resolution, these protests stem from more than four decades of organized resistance against the Iranian dictatorship, led by women who have endured torture, sexual and gender-based evidence, and death. Just a few weeks ago, I attended uh, the recognition of the existence of American hostages and the uh, reflection on those who have been freed. To see the Washington Post reporter brought tears to our eyes. He represented the symbol of hostage taking, but we left behind so many others. These are all fights that we have to have for freedom. The uprising last year in Iran started with the murder of uh, Masha Amini, a 22-year-old woman in the prime of her life, ready for leadership, arrested by morality police in Tehran on September 13, 2022, for allegedly violating Iran's strict rules requiring women to cover their hair with a hijab or headscarf. Since the protests started in September after the murder of uh, Masha Amini's 
women and men have taken to the streets, families have taken to the streets, risking their lives for a free and democratic Iran. Children have taken to the streets. Over 500 people have been killed, over 15,000 arrested. Iranian courts have issued numerous death sentences linked to the protests, convicting people of being enemies of God and spreading corruption on earth. I would argue that they are standing in the light of one who also, our God, knows freedom. As a longtime advocate and fighter for justice and equality, I'm inspired by the ongoing revolution led by Iranian women, and I cannot say more about all of you who have come to know, as someone said, over 25 years, and never giving up, as our famous civil rights and congressman said, and never giving in and never giving out, continuing to have the spirit of fight, and remembering those who cannot speak for themselves. That is why we're here, to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Despite the torture, the people in Iran are continuing their fight. And so I wish to uh, join in all that are here, acknowledge my colleagues that have come, uh, and want to make sure uh, that um, all of them are, in fact, uh, acknowledged. So let me um, end my remarks uh, by pausing uh, before the introduction of uh, the very special guests and indicate my delight uh, to have my co-chair uh, join me uh, and to uh, work with her in, I think, this important journey, one of freedom, and particularly two women, one a Democrat, one a Republican, seeing the hopes and dreams of women in Iran and those of you in this room. We could not say no. We had to say yes. I welcome the co-chair of the Iranian Women Congressional Caucus, and that is Representative Mace of North Carolina. South Carolina. I want to put you in North Carolina. <laughs> They're very close. They're I do. Close. And I, I want to make sure that uh, Mr. Gooden is, rep is uh, recognized as well. Thank you so very much for your presence here today. I yield. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and it's an honor to be here today to show that there is bipartisanship in Congress and in Washington. And, and particularly, we're here today to shed light on the urgent plight of Iranian women. And I want to thank the Iranian women who are here with us this morning and online. Um, they need immediate action in support of their fundamental rights and freedoms that every woman around the world should be able to have. We offer our unwavering commitment in, to advocating for freedom and the rights of women worldwide. This can transcend party lines You unite on issues of human rights. I was the first woman to graduate from the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina, and uh, I have a history of breaking grass ceilings. I'm the first Republican in Congress from my home state of South Carolina. And both uh, Sheila Jackson Lee and I um, have had many firsts. Uh, she was the first woman on her bachelor's degree from uh, Yale, and we both stood for um, sort of the forefront of breaking barriers, advocating for equal opportunities in our role here in Congress. We've both fought for the rights of all individuals regardless of their gender. And um, showing Sheila Jackson Lee's you know, leadership in Congress being one of the, the first congresswomen from Yale and showing her leadership up here for human rights and for women's rights, it's an honor to be with you this morning. Um, we'll not stand for the grave human rights violations inflicted upon the women of Iran by a regime that continues to stifle their voices suppress their aspirations, and deny their basic inhumanity. We're here to address this injustice head on, to challenge the status quo, and to work towards a brighter future for all women of Iran. We're proud to, to mention in uh, HR Res uh, 100, introduced by Congresswoman McClintock, who's here with us today, which solidly condemns the Iranian regime's oppression of women, expresses support for the Iranian people's desire for a democratic, secular and non-nuclear republic of Iran and contem condemns the violations of human rights and state-sponsored terrorism by the current regime. The resolution is a testament to our commitment to justice and our determination to hold accountable those who perpetuate such heinous acts against women. We cannot stand for it. We must send a strong message that the international community stands in solidarity with Iranian women and will not tolerate the suppression of their rights. It is with great admiration and respect that we recognize today's witness, Maryam Rujavi, the president-elect of the National Council of Resistance of Iran, 
Her unwavering courage and tireless advocacy for the Iranian people, particularly women, has not gone unnoticed. Ms. Rajavi, your virtual presence here today serves as a beacon of hope and a beacon of light for those who strive for freedom and equality in Iran. Let us also acknowledge the bravery of the Iranian people who have who've been bravely protesting for their fundamental rights and freedoms, literally putting their lives on the line for freedom. As a representative of the people of South Carolina, we're proud to mention that our State House unanimously passed House Resolu Resolution 4422, which expresses South Carolina's unequivocal support for the people of Iran in their pursuit of fundamental rights and freedoms. We stand in solidarity with the brave men and women of Iran who yearn for a society where their voices are heard, where their rights are respected, and where their aspirations are realized. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to join hands today, rise above partisan politics in Washington, and advocate for the rights of Iranian women and women all over the world. Thank you, Madam. And I, I yield back. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much, and I encourage my, our colleagues as well to co-sponsor our legislation uh, that um, uh, specifically speaks uh, to uh, HRES 310, uh, to this uh, uh, inaction, condemning the inaction by the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, in addressing the poisoning of Iranian schoolgirls. As I introduced um, Madam Rajavi, let me acknowledge the presence of Congressman uh, Danny Davis from Illinois. And let me also acknowledge uh, the other members um, who we know that will join us, and that would be uh, Congressman Weber, um, Congressman Cohen, Ruiz, Gallegos, Davis. I believe we've, did we get all the members, uh, I believe. We want to thank them. Let's thank them for participating uh, today. Um, I don't want to, um, who the chair, they want us to start, uh, Madam Javi, do you yes, want to say, do you want to say just a brief word? Um, Congressman McClintock has graciously indicated that, that we'll proceed to you, Madam. So let me just say that uh, we are eager to uh, have uh, your continued leadership. Uh, you are our sister. Uh, we are Thank honored. You. Uh, and it is important for all to know that she's experienced law, loss uh, by her sister being killed in the 1970s, one sister being killed in the 1980s, uh, that she has been a key leader of the 1980s Women's March Against Compulsory Veiling, uh, candidate for the Iranian parliament from Tehran in 1980. She received over 250,000 votes despite election rigging, and I would like to say a quarter of a million votes that she received. She's an engineering degree from Sharif University of Technology, Iran's MIT, and authored several books on gender equality, freedom, and democracy. As I have known her over the years, she's been consistent, a vocal, passionate spokeswoman and spokesperson uh, for freedom, and offered a bright light of reason through her 10-point plan for tomorrow's free Iran. She is not selfish. She wants and is embracing all, that all may be able to return, to come home to a free Iran led by someone who loves freedom and democracy. She has addressed parliaments in the UK, France, Italy, Belgium, Canada, Norway, Germany, the European Parliament and the Council of Europe. Uh, and uh, we are not a stranger to her, she's not a stranger to us. Ladies and gentlemen, it is certainly my privilege uh, to be able uh, to bring to us uh, Madam Miriam Rajavi, as President-elect. Thank you, good morning. First of all, uh, thank you. Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank the Iranian Women Congressional Caucus and the Congressional uh, Iran Human Rights and Democracy Caucus for their efforts in supporting the struggle of the Iranian people. I thank especially the chairs of these caucuses, representatives, 
Sheila Jackson Lee, Nancy Mays, Tom McKillintock, and Steve Cohen. Thank you for this occasion. Honorable representatives, let me speak briefly about the latest situation in Iran. The uprising that started in September last year changed Iran's political scene. This uprising did not happen overnight, and the leading role of women did not happen by accident. This uprising was, on the one hand, the result of more than 40 years of struggle of the Iranian people and resistance paying a heavy price. And on the other hand, the result of the role of women uh, have played in the leadership of the resistance during the past few decades. To contain the uprising and maintain its survival, the regime relies on brutal suppression of protests, including increase in executions and widespread arrests. At least 94 people have been executed since 1st of May. Today morning, 11 prisoners were executed. The goal is to create an atmosphere of terror to confront the uprising. The Mullahs have intensified the repression, especially against women. They have organized chemical attacks on girls' schools. Uh, they create many restrictions for women to impose the compulsory hijab. Many women are arrested. The Iranian women's slogan is lead or without hijab onwards to revolution. And I have always emphasized no to compulsory hijab, no to compulsory religion, and no to compulsory government. The mullahs also engage in a disinformation and demonization campaign to promote uh, the narrative that there is no alternative to the ruling regime. Recently, documents were uh, disclosed from the mullahs foreign ministry uh, reg regarding their project to discredit, discredit the resistance. However, the uprising showed people are no longer willing to tolerate the current conditions and the situation will not return to the pre-September period. Uh, the desire of the Iranian people is a de democratic, secular, and non-nuclear republic. Today, more than half of the uh, 560 members of the uh, Democratic Alternative, the National Council of Resistance of Iran, are women. In the PMOI, women uh, have played a leading role at all levels during the last 30 years. We believe that the Iranian people and resistance are capable of overthrowing this regime. The most important principle we believe in is freedom. 120,000 of Iran's children have sacrificed their lives for freedom. We and our people insist on people's sovereignty and reject any kind of dictatorship, both their religious and monarchic dictatorship. Uh, the common slogan of the Iranian people uh, in this uprising was no to the Shah, no to Khamenei. Uh, we seek freedom and democracy for our people, whatever the cost. We call on all governments to recognize the struggle of the Iranian people to overthrow the regime. We call on them to confirm the legitimacy of self-defense for Iran's use against the IRGC. The House Resolution 100, which you uh, initiated, is the best example of a correct policy towards Iran. Thank you all very much, and I look forward hearing you. Thank you. Madam Rajavi, we look forward to your continued voice 
speaking for the children who cannot speak for themselves, 120,000, looking forward to the nonviolent continued protests uh, for the many millions of Iranian crying out for freedom. And we look forward for the condemnation of a government who would blind their boys and girls, the future and the todays of this great uh, cause. So thank you so very much. Uh, and uh, we in the caucuses will continue uh, to be a force and presence here in the United States Congress bipartisan. And we will continue to lift up our seniors um, uh, and um, our children together. They represent the history and the future. And we will always be with those who have bared the burden, bared the burden of loss, but have never given up. And they're in this room, if you're able to see them. Uh, the uh, Iranian diaspora is here to support you today. So thank you so very much. Let me yield now to Representative McClintock, who is uh, representing the Distinguished um, Iran Human Rights and Democracy Caucus. Well, thank yeah. you, Ms. Jackson Lee. Yeah. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, to, to the United States Capitol. Thank you for being here. The Iranian uh, Women's Caucus and the Iranian Human Rights and Democracy Caucus were formed within the United States House of Representatives to pursue assistance and action in support of the people of Iran as they struggle uh, to rid themselves of this parasitic, corrupt, incompetent, and oppressive rule of the mullahs. Today's hearing is to shine light on what this regime is doing to disrespect and to oppress the women of Iran. No society that terrorizes and mistreats its mothers, its grandmothers, its sisters and daughters can claim to be civilized. Yet this is precisely what this regime has been doing literally to half of its population. Today we see the women of Iran bravely standing up and speaking out against this regime. They have made it very clear through their sacrifice and courage that they've had enough and will take no more. Even now, innocent Iranian schoolgirls are being poisoned while in the classroom because of their activism in the nationwide protests for removing their mandatory headscarves in school or for expressing dissent against Iran's buffoonish supreme leader. The question we ask at this hearing is, what can we do here in the United States to stand with them and to materially assist them? We begin today by hearing from them directly. The House of Representatives has before it House Resolution 100, sponsored by 230 members of the House of Representatives. Through this resolution, a majority of the entire membership of the House, representing both political parties and a majority of the American people, express support for the Iranian people in their struggle for a democratic, secular, and non-nuclear Iran and condemn the violations of human rights and the state-sponsored terrorism of the Iranian regime. This resolution serves as a strong statement that the people of the United States want Iran's corrupt regime held accountable for its crimes against the people of Iran and for their sponsorship of terrorism around the world. Even just recently, South Carolina and Arizona state legislatures passed a resolution that expressed support for HRES 100. This is further proof that the world stands with you and with your fight for freedom. The U.S. House of Representatives, state legislatures throughout America, and men and women of goodwill across all nations stand united with you and your movement. But we must do more. It is well past time for this administration to take into consideration Secretary Pompeo's recommendation and provide political and material support for Iranian opposition movements and their vision of a free, secular, and democratic Iran. Our national security, the peace and stability in the region, and above all, the Iranian people's right to freedom and democracy demand that the U.S. Congress stand behind the opposition and that the administration speak out and act in their support. This time, in, in this hour, let the United States take its stand with the people of Iran 
and by so doing fulfill those proud words on our liberty bell to proclaim liberty throughout all the land and unto all the inhabitants thereof. And I yield back. <laughs> And yield back. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, Congressman Steve Cohen. Uh, Congressman Cohen, if you would mind that I yield to Congressman Danny Davis and then to you, unless you have a time element here. I am supposed to be on the floor in 15 minutes. Danny, would you yield? Uh, we're delighted to yield to the co chair of the Iran Human Rights and Democracy Caucus and that is the Honorable Steve Cohen of Tennessee. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Davis, for your consideration. To all of the folks here in the Iranian, uh, I guess it's the caucus, it's certainly the constituency and the, the, the diaspora, uh, welcome to the United States Congress. Uh, Mr. McClintock and I have been co-chairs of this caucus for some time, and it's been really enlightening and, uh, and inspiring to see your continual and strong representation and, and advocacy on behalf of those who have not made it out of Iran, who are there under this repressive regime. Uh, you have been courageous, you have been tenacious, and I admire you. Uh, and I am you. I am you because I'm a human being who yearns for freedom and loves the freedom we have in the United States and wants to see the freedom that you want to see in Iran. I'm also you because in my DNA test, I'm like 5% Persian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was, uh, I've got 25% of me is all over there in that world, and then Palestine and Turkey and Armenia and, the, and per Persia. But I, uh, I'm proud of that. So I've seen your, your, your courageous work and standing up for the people who are, I mean, they're you, but they're not you, and you're standing up for somebody else. And that's the most really admired thing you can, you can do, the most admired group, standing up for somebody else and, and for them to have freedom. This regime next to Russia is the most likely to regime to cause war on a grand scale in this world. And that's something else we should not have. What Russia's doing to Ukraine is just atrocious. And Iran wants to do it and is doing it through proxies in the Middle East right now, in, in Lebanon and, and Syria and, and in Israel for their support for Hamas and Hezbollah. Uh, we need to give Iran's people the knowledge that we support them and we do. It's bipartisan and it's strong. And it's for a democratic, non-nuclear, non-secular, -secu democratic, non-nuclear, nuclear-free Iran. That's what we want. That's what we'll continue to fight for. And that's what all countries should be. All countries should be secular. All countries should be free. All people should be free. And nukes should just be for energy, not for war, not for threats of war. That would destroy the entire civilization. You cannot win a nuclear war. Um, I have watched the protesters in Iran. They have been courageous. The young women, the girls is what they are, have gone out there and many, some have been killed. Uh, Masa and others were killed, but they've been arrested. They had projectiles shot at their eyes and, and taken their sight away. Uh, they, they've, they've gone in the, in, in the face of, of great power. They've spoken truth to power which is the greatest thing that an individual can do in the way of showing courage. Uh, it's been admirable. I've, I've watched it from afar with admiration. So I pledge to you, even though I was late today, that I'll be with you forever, even if it's not quite on time. I hope that forever starts a little later in the day. I yield back the balance of my time. <laughs> I do want to acknowledge uh, Congressman Weber's here. We'll yield briefly to um, Representative Davis, and then we will go to Mr. Good and Mr. Weber. Thank you so very much for your, and thank you, Chairman Cohen, uh, for your presence and uh, your pronouncement that you will live forever 
and you'll be <laughs> with all of you forever. Uh, take that as breaking news uh, for Steve Cohen. Thank you. You, you recall, Ma Madam Chair, about three years ago or four years ago in Memphis, some lady thought I was going to retire, and she said I was going to quit in 2020. So I announced for 2020 and 22. Today I announce forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Danny Davis of the great state of Illinois. Thank you, thank you very much, Representative. And all the members of the caucus as well. You know, I recall Dr. Martin Luther King saying that denial of freedom anywhere is a threat to freedom and democracy everywhere. And I got a feeling that he said it many, many, many times. All of the ladies, even though it's uh, past Mother's Day, let me just wish that each one of you who have children had a good Mother's Day. And I believe that any leadership that would do harm deliberately to children have no right to claim leadership or to be in charge of any not less making decisions about the direction of a country. I was very pleased to travel to Paris a few years ago and experience the most inspirational as well as the largest attended meeting that I've ever been to in my life. I couldn't believe that there were that many people there, but there were. And from that moment on, I recognized that there was a tremendous effort underway to free the people of Iran, to provide and bring to it the kind of leadership that believes in democracy, freedom, equal rights, and participation of all. So I have people in the community where I live who want to know why am I a member? of the Iran caucus. I mean, what does it have to do with them? I just remind them, Dr. King said it, the threat to freedom anywhere is a threat <coughs> to freedom everywhere. Congratulations for the continuous work, the continuous effort, and I am pleased to support both these caucuses. I acknowledge the presence of uh, Representative Pete Gallo uh, from the great state of Arizona. We're very delighted to have him as a strong member of uh, this uh, meeting today uh, and as well of our caucuses. Thank you so very much. We'll yield to Mr. Gooden. Uh, thank you for your presence here today. Appreciate your membership as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congresswoman Lee, my great colleague from Texas. It's uh, great to be with everyone here today. And Madam Rajavi, this room is full of so many people that support you and the work you're doing. I first met you in Albania at Ashraf III a few years ago, and I was so inspired by the people that I visited with there and uh, their stories, some very sad stories, similar to many of your stories here in this room. And we, uh, we stand behind you. We firmly believe in your mission and what you're trying to accomplish. Your 10-point plan is very reasonable and something that I believe all Americans uh, would be behind if they truly understood it and, and took the time to read it. Uh, but I'll tell you, the people here in Congress, uh, we are paying attention. We support this plan. We support uh, the work you're doing, Madam Rajavi, and I'm uh, so honored to see you this morning. You look great, okay. and uh, we're looking forward to joining you someday in a very free Iran uh, with all of your, uh, your friends and family that are in this room. So thank you for the work you're doing, thank you. and thank you to everyone um, who's thank supporting you. these uprisings and the protests in Iran. Uh, continue your fight and continue uh, uh, believing in, in the good that I, I do believe will prevail. And thank you again, Madam Rajabi. Thank you. Thank you. Followed by, thank you so very much, and I will say my fellow Texan, 
Uh, thank you very much. Oh, and I will say my fellow Texan as well, uh, Congressman Weber. Thank you so very much. Thank you all. I appreciate that. I want you all to take note. There's three Texans up here on this panel. So. <laughs> So I want to echo my colleague's comments. Madam Rajavi, we're so proud to know you and to see you and to be able to support you. What you're doing is vital. We in Texas understand a fight for liberty like few others do. I do want to say something about our friend from Tennessee, Steve Cohen. I was uh, mildly surprised and glad to hear him say he's going to live forever. <laughs> Because I look in the mirror every morning and I think, gosh, if I'd known I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. <laughs> so I can only imagine how he feels. This is important. Um, and, any, and Danny Davis said it great. Any government who will harm children doesn't deserve to be in power. Uh, we watched the things that are going on, the poisoning of schoolgirls, the use of shotguns to blind students. It breaks my heart. I can't tell you all how important it is that you all are here to support that Madam Rajavi, your continued diligence, the willingness, the faithfulness to put yourself basically in, out there and in harm's way because you have to know that if the tyrants could find you, you, they would make short work of you. And that goes for anybody who disagrees with them. Thomas Jefferson once said that the tree of liberty is often refreshed by the blood of tyrants and of patriots. And that was in their fight for United States independence from Britain. Well, Madam Rajavi has taken it upon herself to represent the fight for freedom and liberty, not just for the girls and the women, which is extremely important for all Iranians. I can't tell you how, how much we admire her, how much we love what she's doing, the support y'all are giving her. Uh, Americans need to hear no more about this, as my colleague Lance Gooden said, and they would be behind Iran. Iran is what, what I would say Ronald Reagan said back, referring to Russia, the evil empire now. They do not deserve to be in power. God will surely judge them, and our, our prayer is quickly, too, that they will take down those tyrants, that he will take down those tyrants, and Iranians will once again be free. Thank you all very much, and I yield back. Well, you are very um, blessed this morning to have um, a wide-ranging representation of America, probably the best of America that you have heard today, uh, and you're going to hear the best of Arizona, uh, and uh, you're going to hear his name is Ruben Gallego, uh, not my friend in Texas of Pete Gallego, um, but he is Ruben Gallego, and I have seen him uh, in uh, the best light of fighting for freedom, and he is one of our own who has served in the United States military, put his life on the line because he is so passionate about freedom. I'm so delighted he is here, Congressman Ruben Gallegos of Arizona. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair uh, and President-elect Rajavi. Thank you also for, for having us and for all the work that you're doing to extend liberty. You know, it has been quite inspiring uh, seeing the women of Iran standing up uh, for freedom and liberty. And it reminds me that no matter what society we look at, no matter what culture, no matter, no matter what religion, people by nature want to be free. They want to be able to determine their own lives, and they do not want to have uh, the heavy hand of government uh, to tell them how to live uh, every day. Uh, and it has been a hard road, obviously, for the people of Iran. Uh, but every day I see these young men and women, especially young women, that are out there risking uh, their lives. Uh, you know, even making schools no longer a safe place for them because they're being poisoned there, or even going to the streets and finding themselves being shot at purposely to, to be blinded. Uh, but, you know, we, and I say we, uh, the people on this dais and many other members, are here uh, in support We'll continue to be in support of the people of Iran because, like, like them, we believe in freedom and we believe that people that want to be free should be free. And I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. 
I want everybody to know that you've had an amazing showing of members uh, this morning. Uh, it is a tribute to you, Madam Rajavi, uh, that your tenacity and determination over 25 years have generated this kind of bipartisan support and respect. And those uh, who are here in this room, faces of whom I've seen over the years, and I've seen tears as well, uh, but yet their tears have not kept them from being present and active and ensuring that there is not silence, deadening silence, but as my colleagues have said, that they have been voices for freedom. Um, you've heard from a very large number of members. In the early mornings, uh, we are overlapping in our uh, meetings, hearings that are going on as we speak. And so I hope uh, that uh, uh, all of you, and you know that I must mention Ali Sajani, uh, who is ever vescent and continuous in my life and in my ears, and to my sisters, who I've come to know as sisters. Uh, and of course, as we call Sister Madam Rajavi, who has been in our life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who has seen death, but yet has not taken uh, to internalizing hatred and anger, has taken to pushing out to the world uh, what freedom is needed in Iran, and she will not cease until the rightful government is in place and that freedom rings from one end of Iran to the next. The young women and children that are in the streets. They deserve freedom. And so I want to um, thank all of my colleagues, allow uh, my co-chair to offer her words. As we say thank you, I know that um, I will be departing. And so I want to yield uh, closing remarks to the Congresswoman who made history herself in the Citadel uh, from South Carolina, <laughs> Representative Mace. Thank you. <laughs> yes. thank you. South Carolina is outnumbered by all the Texans up here, uh, but I want to thank my colleague, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, uh, a woman who's fought for freedom in her own right and has broken many barriers. Thank you. We've worked together a number of times, and it's, it's kind of rare for us to be able to be up here from different parties, from both parties, and working together. And this may be one of the few places where you see Democrats and Republicans come together and there's no better place to do that than right here in a, the fight for Iranian women and their freedom. And um, we want to thank uh, our witness and the, my colleagues who are up here today. This is not easy. And um, it's, it's shocking in many ways to know that these hu human rights violations, the way that women are treated in Iran, that it's going on today in 2023. And we know and understand the risks that you're taking and that women are taking in Iran to their lives. You can see the images up here today of women who've, who gave it all, who gave their life and their fight for freedom just not to wear a hijab, mm -hmm. just to be able thank to you. walk down the street freely. And they lost their lives because of it. And so I, I want to thank you all for allowing us to be a part of this movement, and we will support you in any way that we can. And we want to share our immense gratitude for the women who are here this morning and the men. We love you, too. But, um, and I also want to thank my colleagues from both sides of the aisle for working together on this. There's no greater fight than the fight for freedom. Thank you and many blessings. And I yield back. Many blessings. Many blessings. Mm, thank you, dear Sheila, for presenting this meeting. Dear friends, I want to once again thank you of you, uh, all of you, let me emphasize that the Congress can play an important role. Your support for the uprising and the main force that will overthrow the regime will send a decisive message to the regime and is very encouraging to the people of Iran. This support can help the US government to adopt the correct path. This is especially the case because uh, in the past 44 years, the U.S. policy on Iran has been deeply misguided. U.S. Congress can show the correct path so that America stands with the Iranian people. The U.S. Congress is 
expected to urge the administration to recognize the Iranian people's resistance. This is the only firm response in line with the desire of the Iranian people to overthrow the regime. The efforts by Iranian women and congressional caucuses and the Iran human rights and democracy caucus, uh, caucus are valuable. I especially want to thank my dear sister, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee and um, Nancy Mace. Uh, as you know, we have been fighting against religious fascism for 44 years. Our movement has been the first victim of the regime's crimes and the policy of appeasement. We are facing the most extensive demonization campaign by the regime and its allies, but we have not given up and will continue our struggle until Iran and its people are free. Today, more than any other time, we are hopeful about the regime's overthrow. We are serious uh, about our uh, commitment to topple the regime because we have paid a heavy price, including the 120,000 freedom fighters who sacrificed their lives for freedom. The regime has tried to destroy this movement many times, but um, we have persisted. Members of the MEK in Ashraf Tiri were and are targets of plots and suppression of the Iranian regime. Uh, 1,000 tortured prisoners by two dictatorships of Shah and the Mullahs are among them. They inspire Iranian youth in their struggle for freedom. Today, the resistance units in Iran are expanding and preparing for the overthrow. After the 1979 revolution, Khomeini offered the MEK a share of power on the condition that they accept absolute uh, clerical rule and take part in suppress suppressing others. But uh, the MEK rejected him. Our movement is the antithesis of theocracy because the MEK, as the movement's main force, believes in democratic Islam and defends the separation of religion and the state. We are not seeking power at any cost. We want to create a situation where the Iranian people can freely decide their future and elect their uh, true representatives. We have always said that we want neither money nor weapons, but we ask that governments stop providing economic and political concessions to the regime. Uh, in that case, the Iranian people and resistance will overthrow the regime. Once again, I thank you for being on our side on this long path towards freedom. You know that today, only today, 12 prisoners were executed by the Mullah's regime. And this is this situation in Iran. Once again, thank you for, for all your effort and standing with the Iranian people and the organized resistance. Thank you very much. Thank you. We, we are all freedom lovers here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.